Here's this final example I want to pull out for today. It overlaps a little bit with what you learnt at the end of last week about uh, where is it going? Normal approximation to the binomial distribution. But it looks at um, today's new idea about sample proportions. So let's just read it together and take in what's going on. A survey of 2,000 Australian voters. Pause right there. 2,000, that's the surveyors taking their handful. They've got the 2,000 voters in their hand. It's just the sample though, right? So the 2,000 Australian voters, let's just note that down. N equals 2,000, right? This is our N which is going to become important later on for when we're working out bits and pieces because you have to divide by that, right? Okay, it's being used to estimate this probability, lowercase p, remember when that's just there by itself. Uh, it's still there on the board. What's that called again? That's the entire population proportion, right? Do you remember I mentioned to you before, the textbook will often just kind of treat this as a, we magically know this number, don't ask how, we just know it, okay? It is useful though, mathematically, because we can start to think about how accurate can we be and how confident can we know that we're, there, we're that accurate. The, the actual value of p equals one over three. Now, because I can see, I'm sort of reading ahead a little bit, we've got these decimal values coming up for, working out how accurate we are, I'm going to go and translate this into a decimal so that we can actually do some comparisons. Obviously, we're just getting all the threes forever, right? So far, so good. Use the normal approximation to the sample proportion distribution to find the probability that the experiment will yield an estimate. I'm not going to worry about B because it's really just the same question again, but with slightly different numbers. Let's just think about A. What's the probability that when we do this sample of 2000, that our estimate will be within 0.01 of the actual value, between 0.01 of this actual value. So let's think about this for a minute, right? What's being asked, we want to know what's the probability that when we go ahead and do this sample proportion, which is how do we write, what's our symbol for sample proportion again? on the board. P hat, good, so it's there in the middle. We want to know what's the probability that this is within what boundaries? Have a think. 0.34 Good, so we know magically that this is the actual answer. So to be within 0.01 of this, this is the second decimal place, so it goes up, it goes down by that amount. So if I were to actually write that, the lower boundary is the 3, 2. 3, 3, and so on. And then here's our upper boundary, 0 0.34. Three, three. Okay, fantastic. Now, how do we go ahead and work this out? If we're going to use, as the question suggests, the normal approximation, we've got to turn these things into what? Does anyone remember? I, I heard it, I sort of. Right here. We, we need Z scores. We need Z scores. Because on the normal distribution, right, everything is in terms of Z score. Z zero at the middle, and then plus or minus one, plus or minus two, etc. right? And even though that thing is a pain in the butt to actually integrate, we've got approximations for this. I'll, I'll pull up the table in a minute, okay? So what I, need, what I need to do is to turn this into, turn this into the probability of some things, some Z values, less than, greater than, I just need to know what these things are. Is this ringing a bell at all? Okay, I wasn't, yeah, good, okay. I'm like, that, 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 that bit you guys should know, this is the new part, okay? So how do I turn it into this? How do I get from something which is not standardized into something which is standardized? What am I gonna be dividing by? Does anyone remember? I think I heard it, just not quite confident, that's okay. Um, we need to divide by standard deviation, right? The standard deviation for my particular sample. So let's see if we can remember this, right? This is kind of like our main line of working, but we need to do some like side working to help us out here, okay? So let's work out each of the things. To work out our standard deviation, we generally start with variance, right? Um, by the way, once we get the variance, how do you get standard deviation from this? Take the square root. Okay, so that's going to be the easy part, right? Does anyone remember what the fraction is? For variance. Yeah, in this context, right? In our binomial distribution context. I'll give you a clue, it does start with P, right? It's the probability of whatever is the end that you're doing, but you also need, in binomial, you need its complement, right? We generally call that Q, right? So this is one take away P in this case, but we'll just put the numbers in in a minute. And then what do we divide by? 
yeah, how big your sample is. So that's going to be the end that I'm going to put in there. Okay. So let's go ahead. Let's go and do our numbers. We magically know this probability. So up on my numerator, I've got a third times. What's the complement? Two thirds. That's my numerator. And what I'm dividing by is 2,000. There you go. Okay. Um, thousand. The twos are going to cancel. That looks like one over nine thousand to me. Some tiny number. Okay. This is just my variance. What were we after again? Standard deviation. So I'm going to take the square root of that. Can someone give me? Oh yeah. Do you have a question? Uh, yeah. I thought variance was p times q times n. So. There's a lot of ways to work out variance, right? Um, there's like, there's all the calculus ways and that kind of thing. In the context of this question, the easiest way to work it out, the most direct path, is this way. You would actually get the same value if you did it that way, but this is, this is just an easier formula in this context. If you haven't encountered that yet, that's okay. I'm showing it to you now, okay? Um, I don't have the time to show you why they get the same result, but I have a video on it, so you can look at that if you like. All right, for now, can I get, an, can I get a decimal? Like, this is going to be some zero point, you know, what have I got? 1026. 1026? That is not the number I got. Zero. Hold on a second. Mm. Bear with me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, I'm, I'm looking for the standard deviation, which is the square root of this. There we go. <laughs> I always have to have the mild moment of panic when I'm like, maybe I did screw up my numbers beforehand, but no. There we go. That's the square root of the variance. So far, so good. We're on the same page. Okay, great. Now I know what I need in order to get to my Z scores, these bits here. Okay? Now remember, we actually know what these things are, not just in terms of decimal, but we know what they are in relation to the actual mean. This one here, it's negative 0.01, right? It's, it's 0.01 less than what the mean's supposed to be. And then we can divide by our standard deviation, this number right here, 0.01054, like so. Okay, so I'm trying to get into z-score territory because I'm standardizing, that's what this does. What about this one? It's not negative 0.01, it's positive because I'm, I'm going up, right? So it's, I might even write plus there so that you can see where I'm getting this from. So 0 0.01054. OK. Can some, I mean, because these are the same number, just positive, negative, can someone tell me what it is? So on the right side, it's yep. 0 0.095. Uh, can you give me a few more, just for the sake of it? 0 0.094878. Eight, yep, uh, 947. 9488. 8. 9, 8, 8. Great, OK. And then obviously, on the other side, it's just the negative of that, OK? So just a little bit underneath one standard deviation. Sorry, yeah, that's right. OK, so far, so good. So now I've turned this into um, Z-score language. At this point, I'm ready to use the normal approximation. Where do I go? 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0. Am I missing a 0? Yeah, you're missing a 0 at the front. There? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's not right. Have a look at my decimal places. That can't be right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it, yeah, yeah? Okay. All right. Now, let me pause. I know it's lunchtime. Do people need to go? Or would you like me to finish this question? <laughs> I'm supposed to be a place. I don't care about that. Okay. So, I, by the way, the way that I knew, I'm like, there can't be a zero here. It's because I looked at the magnitude of these things. Yeah? Like, it's got to be pretty close to one, right? Anyway. Okay. So, what do I do with this thing, right? Just remember what it is that I'm trying to calculate. Here is my... Um, Here's my binomial distribution, right? And I know that at zero, I'm here in the middle, okay? And just going plus or minus about one standard deviation, right? I'm somewhere around here, let's call this 0.948, etc. And then somewhere here, negative 0.948, etc. So far, so good. Now, obviously, the real way to accurately do this is by integrating, but you guys have seen the function before, right? You're like, oh, no one's integrating that, okay? So where do I go to actually get these values. Remember? Yeah, let's go to the table. Now, here's one I prepared earlier. Okay. Now, let's have a look. We're in the ballpark. I know I asked for more decimal places, right? But where are we in the ballpark of? There's the point 0.9 row. Yeah, so there's the first decimal place. And then which column should I go across to? <coughs> it's it's going to be between here. Which, which one am I closer to? I think I'm closer to the 0.05, right? 
Does that look like it rounds closer to 0.95? So I'm reading down to this row, 0 0.8289. Now, I'm not gonna ask you to say it, I just need to get a sense. Who feels comfortable, once they know what that number is, they know what to do with it? Any takers? Okay, great, so that, that's why you're all like, no, I'm fine to stay. Okay, this is very important. If you haven't already, draw like a rough version of this normal distribution for me. It's very important that you do this, otherwise you don't know what's the point of the numbers, okay? That number, 0.8289, it's the cumulative distribution function that's being worked out here, right? Cumulative, so all the way up to this point. So see this area I'm shading in red. See that red area? Yeah. That's 0 0.8289. You following so far? And one of the things that's helpful about drawing this is that you're like, well, it even looks like 0 0.8289. Here's this tiny little bit off the end here, okay? Now this, this is not our answer because look, it's not what I'm trying to work out. This would be the answer if that was negative infinity, right? But I, I need this like middle section. This middle section, are you following? Yeah, yeah. So in other words, yeah, I have to cut off this part of things. How big is that though? Also the scores are like the approximation of the integral of the function. Correct, function. yes, exactly right, yeah, exactly right. So this is the green section I want. This red number here is this red area, so I need to slice off all of this. How am I going to work out how big that is? Yeah, it's symmetrical, isn't it, right? So this black area is the same as this one over here, which we can work out as one take away the red area, because the whole integral is one, right? That's the whole reason why is that. So it's 0.8289 over here, okay? Now, because of this drawing, I have erase all my space that I need to continue this working, but we're finally ready to go, right? I'm going to write this as 0 0.8289, that's the red area, take away the black part, which I've just worked out is this. 1 take away 0.8289. Does this ring a bell? You can see, in fact, this is really um, two lots of that number you might have seen this formula before, take away one. It's always going to be some version of this when you're doing this symmetrical thing, right? Someone give me a number? 0.657. To three decimal, oh sorry, did you say eight? eight yeah. Let's go four decimal places, okay? Now just before you all run off, let's just take a step back and say, what was this question even asking? I need to get back the question. <clears throat> what is the probability that we are within this accuracy, I'm getting a 66-ish percent confidence, which is, to be honest, not that great because, where is it? This sample size is not that big in the scheme of like an infinite thing, right? So obviously, the bigger this number gets, you can go ahead and do all the working, you can see how this confidence increases. Make sense?